The Adelaide and Mount Lofty Ranges region is an amazing place, comprising a variety of coastal environments including bays, dunes, salt marsh and cliffs. The vegetation has adapted over time to survive the harsh coastal environment. It now faces challenges from many exotic species, including a plant we identify more with gardens. Hi, I'm Corey Jackson, Coast Estuary and Marine Officer with the Adelaide and Mount Lofty Ranges Natural Resource Management Board. I'm here today at Middleton Beach to have a look at a garden escapee that has jumped the fence and is spreading into our natural environment. Today we're going to have a closer look at gazanias, their biology, their threats to the local environment and some control options. Like many other weeds in Australia, gazania was introduced as a garden variety from southern Africa. There are two main species, Gazania linearis and Gazania regans. In our region, we mainly see Gazania linearis, which we will focus on here. Gazanias are recognised for their daisy-like flowers. The petals are commonly yellow, orange, which graduate to a darker colour or black at the base. Gazania linearis has tufts of dark green leaves on the upper surface and appear white and hairy below the leaf. It spreads through seed and runners. On the other hand, Gazania regans has silvery hairy leaves. It spreads over the soil surface forming dense mats. It occurs more in the eastern states and in parts of Western Australia. Within Australia, there are many other Gazania species, including hybridised varieties. Here is an infestation of Gazanias that are crowding out the native vegetation, in this case the spinifex. As you can see, the gazania forms a thick mat. They also have underground rhizomes which collect under the sand and a deep root system that goes down, collecting all the water and nutrients that would otherwise be available for our local native plants. Here is a gazania flower which will soon form into a flower head like this one before creating seed. As you can see, there's many small seeds that are easily blown around in coastal windy conditions. Gazania is also spread through the dumping of garden waste and being carried by machinery and even people. Gazania's hardiness and ability to outcompete local native plants gives it a real edge in the coastal environment. This cushion bush here is being outcompeted by the gazanias for water, nutrients and light. And as you can see, are slowly displacing them with new plants as the older plants die. There are two preferred methods of gazania control. The first method of control that we're gonna look at today is manual or grubbing of uh, gazanias. Now we'll do this in environments where there's a lot of native vegetation like this one, where we don't want off target spraying. The first thing you need to do is to remove the flower heads and bag them so that they can't form into seed before we manually pull the plant out of the ground. We want to make sure that we get all the root system. As you can see they have long roots that go into the sand and breaking off these roots could allow a new plant to germinate. They also have rhizomes which are spreading under the sand and forming new plants. So if that's broken off and left behind, that'll become a new plant. So remove all of the plant and its roots and bag the whole plant where possible and remove from the site. With larger plants, we need to grub out the plant to get them out because they have strong root systems. The one over here, I'll demonstrate using a mattock we want to get underneath the plant and lever or pull it out. As you can see, the plant's still attached to the ground for its root system. So I'll have one more go at it. After removing the gazania, make sure that you put the soil that's been disturbed back where it was, compact it back down to avoid erosion and to uh, allow for natural regeneration of native plants. 
It's best to do follow-up monitoring to make sure that no new plants have established. The second control method we're going to talk about today is controlling gazanias through spot spraying. So I've got my personal protective equipment on, which is appropriate for the task. I've got my knapsack and the chemicals that we're going to use today is a mixture of glyphosate, wetting agent and a red marker dye so we can see the weeds that we've sprayed and which ones we need to. And this side here we sprayed a year ago and you can see the gazania has completely died. We're going to work on this section next to it and push the weed front further along. So what you want to do is target plants where there's going to be no off-target damage or native plants. So I'm just going to start with these clumps here. We want to cover all the foliage with the herbicide mixture for the plant to absorb. Always remember not to spray plants if there's native vegetation, like in this case here, where you've got some bower spinach as a ground creeper, and you've got other plants like the ruby salt bush and pimelia. So I'm going to hand grub that one at a later date once the plants have died off around at the gazanias. Remember when handling chemicals, follow the label directions and wear the correct personal protective equipment for the task at hand. Gazanias are well established here at Middleton Cliffs and in some people's houses and gardens. The Tulkamore Reserve behind me here is free of gazanias and we're trying to keep it that way. We're working with the local community to control gazanias both in the coastal reserve and in their gardens to protect this coastal asset. Here on the edge of the Tulkamore Reserve We've been controlling gazanias. This was sprayed a year ago with a glyphosate and wetting agent mix and we've had close to 100% die off. Following that, we replaced them with local native plants, like the ones you'll find in the Coastal Gardens booklet. The board also holds workshops that educate homeowners about garden plants that can spread from your garden into the coastal environment and outcompete our local natives. The guide is now available through many nurseries and directly to residents along the coast. We've had excellent feedback from our workshops and neighbours are now educating each other of the benefits of local coastal plants, spreading the message door to door. We've had great interest from other regions in SA and even in other areas of Australia with many organisations developing guides for their own regions. If you'd like a copy of this booklet, please contact the Adelaide and Mount Lofty Rangers Natural Resource Management Board or go to their website and download a copy today. Mm -hmm.